Let's see, the Gospel of John, well, maybe they were written about the same time. But anyway, look at, he said he would show you things to come. And you remember in, when John wrote the book of Revelation? That's one of the things he said. Uh, he was showing things that were, things that are, and things that are to come. Right. So he was guided by the spirit of truth. And then on, on John 14, 26, he says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. And did that happen? Yes. yes. When did that happen? Day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit came and filled those, all those in the upper room. And so he said that whom my Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And you remember how it was that he told them things and they didn't even, they, they didn't even think about it or remember it until after he was resurrected? And then it says, and then they remembered that he had taught them. Okay? So, um, so the Holy Spirit helps us to bring things back to remembrance. Does he do that with you and me? Yes. Amen. If we study. <laughs> if we study the word. He can have something to say. You know, that's way back when you studied that. And, and you can go back and refer to it. Through the scriptures. So yes. He, he helps us too. Okay. Let's take a look at another one here. Under. Under number, let's see, where am I at? Two. Number two. Two. Okay, number two, yes. I have, uh, I have, okay, I see how I got confused. Okay, somebody read number two. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the, is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Mm -hmm. John 20, 30. Mm -hmm. 31. Yes. Yeah, read the next one. Which things oh, also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. 1 Corinthians 2.13. Okay. Oh, I have it wrong. It's 1 Corinthians. I'm sorry. I, uh, she read it right. That was... Yes, I, I see that now. Correct it. Oh. Okay. So it will show 1 Corinthians. Okay, so let's go back. So why we read that. See, go back to this one. Okay. It says, uh, the apostles were aware that God was giving them his precious word. And it says, and many other signs, truly, 
did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. You remember John wrote that. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Why did Jesus come? Yes, he did. Matter of fact, can you prove it? Can you, can you give me a scripture of why he came? That's one. This is Christmas time. I want you, you know, I know you've been, been reading your, 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 okay, John 3, 16. Okay, all right. Let me, let me just share with you one more. Um, there, there, there are many others, but I want you to look at this one because we're going to be talking about it. Um, and uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 11. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. He just told us in that verse why he came. But I want you to read, read it louder, please. Yes, uh, Larry has the mic. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Okay. He's telling us right there why, why he's sending his son and what we need. We need a Savior. So he's saying here, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the one who was promised, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Uh, Christ. Uh, John went, went on to point out that he who has the son have what? Life. Have life. That's right. He who has the son have life. He who has not the son have not life. But the uh, raft of God abides on him. Okay? Okay, so here, uh, what this is confirming for us uh, is that the apostles were aware that God was giving them his precious word. And also the fact in, in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Um, if we go by man's wisdom, man's wisdom has given us all kind of ways to be saved. And none of them will save us. And uh, most of them are by works, by the things that we do, right? Um, and we cannot be saved by that. But we have to look at what the Holy Spirit has taught, has, has led the apostles to write. And, um, and he says... Uh, Life is through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we want to continue on. Now this portion where we are now. It talks about the major divisions of the New Testament. And these are the books that the apostles. Uh, and the writers of the New Testament were guided by, by the Holy Spirit. So, you know the four Gospels, what are they? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay, and you know the epistles, um, and I may just try to break it down. Um, matter of fact, I see they are broken down. What are the, what are the epistles that Paul wrote? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. 
Oh, Hebrews. <laughs> oh, did Paul write Hebrews? Okay, they're not sure. Okay. Um, I'm one of those who believe that he did. Uh, there's too many references that I see that, uh, that when I read, I, I got to believe Paul was one of the, I may have written, huh? It sounds like Paul. That's, that's what I say too. But I, you know, we, we, we don't know for sure. Okay, so then we have some other uh, letters or epistles, and they're called general epistles. And what are they? Mm -hmm. Okay. And who wrote James? <laughs> okay. Who wrote first and second Peter? Peter. Who wrote first, second, third John? John. And Jude? Jude. Jude. That's right. Jude. So they were they were named after after themselves. Okay. And then the last one we have is uh, the book is broken into prophecy. So we have the Gospels, we have history. I think I skipped over history. But maybe we talked about it under, yes. Okay, history is Acts, okay. And, um, and who wrote the book of Acts? Luke, Luke, the physician. Did he write another book? Of course, you know what it is, right? Okay, all right. Um, yeah, and we're grateful for every one of those writers. Uh, okay. And what is Revelation? What category is it put in? Prophecy, right. Prophecy. Uh, end times. And... Um, so they're, they're equivalent to, we have prophecy in the Old Testament, prophecy in the New Testament. And um, we also have history in the Old Testament. So here, would someone read the, um, what, what the writer wrote about the, these um, modern divisions? The writer of the New Testament book has to be an individual with apostolic, apostolic, apostolic mm -hmm. authority. Mm -hmm. We believe, therefore, that when the apostle John finished writing the book of Revelation, the New Testament canon was completed. Okay. What do you think he means by apostolic authority? They had to be an apostle? Um, what, what, what did it mean to be an apostle? What, what did it mean to be an apostle? Let's take a look. Let me see if I can... Chosen by God, okay. Chosen by God is good. What else? Was there any other criteria? They I know had, you know, had, Larry. Go ahead. Yeah, they had to have um, seen Christ and had walked with Christ. Right. They seen Christ and walked with Christ. There's a, a scripture that refers to that, and I believe it was in Second Corinthians, um, where Paul had to give a defense of of his apostleship. And I'm trying to, I think it's in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm trying to find a verse. But the uh, Maybe, if, yes. What about 1 Corinthians 9? That, I don't know if this is the one you have in mind, where it talks about um, verse 1. Uh-huh. 
Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Is that 1 Corinthians? 1 Corinthians. 9. Okay, 1 Corinthians. First, okay. Yeah, chapter 9. That's probably the one I'm thinking about. Uh, is that, is that Larry? it? Larry. You want me to read? Yes, please. 1 uh, Corinthians 9, mm -hmm. um, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Am I not an apostle? Am I not free? Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, yet doubtless I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. And then he goes on. So he's, he makes it real clear in, in the verses there that he had seen the Lord. Um, you know, and he was chosen by God, as you said, Pastor Benson. Mm -hmm. And he gives real clear evidence what an apostle is. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 9. Starting Beginning at verse, at verse one. 1. Starting at verse 1, and I read through um, verse number 4. Right. And so we, we know how many apostles were they? And one was... One was the devil. Uh, one, one was... Uh, one betrayed him. So, so, uh, so who else was chosen? As an apostle. Matthias. Y yes. Uh, he was. And. Um, in Acts chapter 1. I believe it was. Yes. But also. But the, later the Lord chose. Another one. Paul. Yes. He chose. He, he chose Saul. Who was Paul. Okay. Um, now. I, I want to go through all that. Because. There were other writers. Well, there was one more writer who was not an apostle, but he was also chosen to write. Who could it be talking about? Mark. And who else? Uh, Jude was not one of the 12, I don't believe. So, Jude, who else? Was Luke an apostle? Okay, so so Luke is Luke is one, right? Um, so those three. Um, there's one more. Uh, was James an apostle? Was he one of the twelve? Let me put it that way. Okay. He didn't become saved until when? When did James become saved? Huh? After the crucifixion of Christ. You remember, in, I believe it was in John 7, it says even his brothers didn't believe? You remember that? Um, I believe it was John chapter 7. Uh, let me see. After these things. Okay. John chapter 7. And in verse, uh, beginning verse 1, 1 to 5. So want to read that? After these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry, because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea that the disciples also may see the works that thou doest. And there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeketh to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. Mm -hmm. For neither did the, his brethren believe in him. That's good. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yes. Now this is just before... He goes back to Jerusalem and is crucified. Mm -hmm. And so it was after the uh, resurrection that James became one of the pillars of the church. And uh, you, you then began to see in the book of Acts how he was one of the early church leaders. Okay. So, Pastor Benson, I mm -hmm. understand that James was the half brother of the 
Lord Jesus? Yes. Okay. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, why would you say half brother? Well, huh? um, I was letting somebody else respond. <laughs> there you go. She, she said. <laughs> well, why was he the half brother? He wasn't the son of God. Right. Only Jesus was. Okay. So Christ had two natures. Right. Um, he was. He had the same mother, but they couldn't have the same father. Exactly. They had the same mother, but uh, uh, so. I just saw an ambulance. Oh, there it goes. Ambulance going back. Um, they had the same mother, as Pastor Larry said, but they didn't have the same father. Okay? Okay, so that's why he was called half brother. All right. So, getting back, it says that the writer of the New Testament book had to be an individual with apostolic authority. We believe, therefore, that when the Apostle John finished writing the book of the Revelation, the New Testament canon was complete. Amen. And um, go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought everybody could hear my voice. I'm sorry. Um, there are people who claim to be apostles today. Sure. So are they wrong? Um, I mean, do we have apostles today? Somebody uh, answer that for me. I just thought I'd put that out there. I just thought I'd put it out there. <laughs> I know Larry knows the answer, but he's... he's <laughs> okay. Okay. But how, how do you prove that? Where do you show that? Uh, in the scriptures? Okay, tell me where. Tell me where. You don't have to take a lot of time. I know that it's right on the tip of your tongue. Okay. <laughs> Can we um, look at Acts 1? Acts 1. And um, yeah, um, they, they decided they needed to replace Judas who had um, killed himself. And in Acts 1, um, starting at um, verse number 21. Um, Therefore of these men, Acts 1, 21, who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and among us, beginning from the baptism of John to the day when he was taken up from us, one of these must become a witness with us of his resurrection. Mm -hmm. And they proposed two, Joseph called Barsabas, um, Barsabas, I think, who was surnamed Justice and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you, O Lord, who know the hearts of all, show which of these two have, you have chosen to take part in this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell that he might go to his own place mm -hmm. and they cast lots and the lot fell on Matthias and he was numbered with the 11 apostles mm -hmm. correct there was all, I was looking for something else also and I um Maybe it's, maybe I just have to do some more looking, but um, I believe it's in First Corinthians twelve, uh, where it talks about there there are gifts, and um, <clears throat> there were certain gifts that were temporary, and certain gifts that were um, were permanent. But I, I'm, I, I need to, uh, I need to do more looking on that. But we don't, to, to, to Larry's point, we don't have apostles today. Uh, one of the criteria we said was that they had to have seen the Lord, right? How many have seen the Lord today? 
Uh huh. Unless they seen them in a dream or something, their own mind. Right, right. That that is that is what we do. Uh, men do. Um, they they tend to exalt themselves. Okay, rather than exalt the word. The word is what's important. Okay, so we'll take a look now at. Um, oh, what? A, oh, okay. I know why I put this up here. Let me see. In your book, you see that there's a time chart on page 49. And I did these charts some time ago, and I did set it up. Oh, my. What I was trying to do, die was. Okay. I just wanted to put it on, um, on one of the um, screens and bring it up. But uh, take a look. Take a look on page forty-nine, and you see um, very important dates up at the top. Four B.C., A.D. thirty, A.D. sixty-eight, A.D. one one hundred. What do you see that's significant or important that happened in four B.C.? the life of Christ we celebrate the birth of Christ um, generally somewhere around 4 BC uh, there's I see different dates but 4 BC uh, because it's believed that that's when Christ was born and Christ time I believe it was Julius Caesar that went back and revised time to the to the date to the birth of Christ, but the person who set it up they got it wrong, and so therefore it was said at four B.C. Um, but four B.C. is is, is the date, and uh, and then A.D. thirty. What happened then? Around A.D. thirty. Come on, y'all know this one. Okay, the writings, the writings, yes. What else happened? Thank you, Brother Larry. Thank you, Brother <laughs> Brother Bill. <laughs> They're sharp on the money this morning. <laughs> some of us need some coffee. <laughs> You're like me when I first came in this morning. Uh, the resurrection. If, if you can help with the man, that if it was four, and then and, and he lived about on a, on a earth, 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 33 and a half years, right. that would mean around 30 years. Yes. Right, exactly. That's how you get the time. You, you follow yeah. what he said? Yeah. Well, Christ began his ministry around 30 BC, right? That's when priests normally went to serve. And so they would, uh, and Christ was on the earth how long? Approximately. He was on the earth about 30 some years. But how, how long did he serve? How long did he minister officially? Yes, about three, three and a half years. Somewhere in there, okay? So 30 years plus three and a half years of service, that's 34 years. 4 B.C. is before Christ. Okay, so A.D. was 30 years. So you add to 2, right? You come up with 34, about 34 years. So roughly 34 years. So, and in the last year, what happened? Somebody said it. No, he was crucified and resurrected. Okay, so that's why the cross is there. If you see, you see the cross? The red cross is made there in red so we wouldn't miss it. 
So that has to do with the, with the crucifixion and the resurrection. So he's just, it's just a, a visual uh, guide to help us to understand the dates and the time and what took place. Okay, okay so w during the, after 30 AD, it, time goes up to 60, uh, 68 AD. And what happened during that time? Uh, no, not exactly. Now, take a look. Some of you have your Bibles. In your Bibles, if you turn to the book of Matthew, the first page, does it give a date for the writing of the book? Or if you turn to any other book of the scriptures, does it give a date? Right, right. So it's giving a time frame. Okay, 50 to 75 AD. So some of them are not exact, and we can't always be sure about the exact writing. But these are time frames. And so the first scripture wasn't written in 30 AD. So that's why, you know, it wasn't written exactly after Christ. It was written some years after Christ. And uh, so that's why, you know, he has 68 A.D. And it's believed that all these books were written by 68 A.D. Uh, Matthew. There you go. Those books. Yes. It's believed by 68 A.D. all those books were written. Okay. And then it wasn't until later that the Gospel of John and his letters in the Revelation were written. Okay. Some have it as 90. Or somewhere in around 90 AD. If you look at your Bible, Bibles. You may see dates on there. Um, for instance. Yes. Matter of fact. <clears throat> Now, I'm, I have a Schofield, uh, King James, and, it have, and the writer of this, uh, they, they said that the date of the writing was around 95 AD. Okay? So it's just to give you a rough idea. Okay? They're not, they're not exact. It's just giving you a rough idea. <clears throat> so it's just to try to help you understand the chart. Okay? Uh, it's similar to this one. Okay, this is the closest I could come. Um, 30 AD was the death, of, uh, death and resurrection of Christ. Um, it's believed that within about 15 years. Is that right? 30, 45? Yeah, about uh, 15 years after the death and resurrection of Christ that the book of James or Galatians were written. And, around, and you see the dates. Uh, this is somebody's, somebody's uh, estimation of when, when these books were written. So that gives you an idea. Of, and, and the author's just trying to give you a chart. It's just to try to help us out. <clears throat> okay, so we go back to, to, uh, to number C on the page 45. <coughs> Oh, excuse me, page 49. The candidacy of the Apocrypha is rejected. <clears throat> okay, will someone read about the candidacy of the Apocrypha being rejected? the New Testament and found in the Roman Catholic <clears throat> version of the Bible. They are denied canonicity for the following reasons. Okay. Um, thank you. Just a moment. Do you understand? Have you ever seen the apocryphal books? Have you ever seen a Bible with the apocrypha in it? If you had a Catholic Bible, then you've seen it. 
Yeah, the, 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 they, the, um, the Bible that they have, uh, the first, uh, well, you raised a question. I'm going to ask you some questions. The first translation of the New Testament, I believe it was the first translation of the New Testament, was what? How was it, how was, what was it written in? What language? I believe the first one may have been Latin. Huh? No. I'm talking about when it was translated. Yeah, I'm sorry, it was, it was Greek. But when it was translated, the first Bible, I believe it was Latin. The Jerome Bible, Bible the Latin Vulgate. Okay? The Latin Vulgate. And that was written for Catholics. And they use it. I believe they use it even today. Which is why a lot of their services are done in Latin. Okay? So, um, and when, and interestingly, Jerome didn't put those, those apocryphal books in his Bible. He didn't. Um, but these are these are books that is it doesn't that uh, we don't believe or um, canonical, and and he's gonna he's gonna go into detail as to why um, why they were rejected. Yes. No. 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 Are these books God-breathed? And you said no. The question, are they God-breathed? Uh -huh. Meaning that the Holy Spirit has sanctioned them. Yes. Or, or, and they are... No. No, he hasn't... The Holy Spirit didn't authorize these. Okay, okay. so what are these books written for? Because some people have added them into, into the Bible, particularly the, the Latin Bible, the Roman Bible. Brother Bill has a comment he wants to make, and I'll come back. Hold on just a moment, Brother Bill. When Jerome was translated into the Greek, he knew that the Apocrypha was not scripture, mm -hmm. but the Pope insisted that he included it. Mm -hmm. And so, Pastor Bill, uh -huh. if I can add to that, um, we believe as Protestants that there was 400 solid years. So after the last book of the Old Testament, which is Malachi, we believe that, that God did not give a prophetic word until Matthew. But some believe that he did. And that's where we get the apocryphal books. So that there was writings, but they did not meet the standard that the first fathers deemed that were from God. Others felt like, no, we need to include them in them, including as what Bill just said. So um, they don't have the same weight as the word of God. But some of our Catholic friends, and that's where they had their Bibles, believe they do. So we have those books in there. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at, um, we only have, a matter of fact, we don't have time. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, take a look at your, look up uh, next week, look up the Apocrypha. You see it spelled here, Apocrypha, and do some research. Okay, come back and let us know, and, and uh, maybe Sister Margaret, you can answer her question. Or, or maybe you have a question of your own you can answer. Um, because I thought I had a different date for the, uh, for the inclusion of these books in the Bible, but I see here, it looks like they were included as early as 404 uh, AD. And, um, but anyway, I'm gonna do some research too, okay? So let's, let's do that for next week. We'll be ready to talk about the apocryphal books and also uh, take a look at the Dead Sea Scrolls. Look up the Dead Sea Scrolls.
Okay? And we'll do research on that and be ready to talk about those two things um, and what impact they have on the, on the scriptures. Okay? Thank you so much. And um, Father God, we do thank you and praise you for your precious word. Dear Lord, we thank you for the Holy Spirit uh, that uh, helped men to distinguish what books were to be included and excluded from your precious word. We thank you, dear Lord, that even today that uh, you've given us discernment to know uh, what to read and not to read and um, what to believe and not to believe. And so, dear Lord, we thank you for your spirit. We thank you for teachers, for preachers, for pastors, and um, to help us to, uh, to, to, to know what is truth and uh, for helping us to grow. And we pray, dear Lord, that we would take your word seriously um, to implement it and to, uh, to live it uh, as best we can and to be the people you would have us to be. I do pray that you would get glory out of our worship this morning. I thank you for each one who thought it worthy to come out. And uh, Father, I pray you bless each one. And uh, we know that your blessing, your word is a blessing. And we pray that um, it has edified uh, each one of us. And we pray you get glory. Help us to study. Be faithful servants. We pray in Christ's name. Amen.